What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. I'm Nicholas. That is Noah at FB God. This is Big Dogs Got to Eat BDGE Fantasy Football. Every Wednesday, we're hitting y'all with the trade targets video. Sell high, buy low candidates. Dudes coming off of big games. Maybe guys having shitty games, and we want to buy them on the low. So we're going to jump in today. Make sure you are following us at our Twitter handles, which are down there below. Also, we do this live every week on Twitch, twitch.tv slash big dogs fantasy around 4 to 4 15 p.m. Eastern time. So we are live right now. We are not looking at the comment section because it's fucking madness in there. It's a jungle. And uh, we got some funny people in the audience. So we tend not to listen to them. Otherwise, we will not give you a good product. Noah, how are we doing? Welcome back to the HQ. We're doing, we're doing better than last week, I could say. Now that I got the Twitch stream down, I don't have to look at the comments. I think I'm a little more focused, a little more big facts are going to come from this end. Hopefully it makes a good video out of that. All right. I'm ready to roll if you are. Obviously, we need to uh, hit the intro. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, Mike. George, Noah will never get the intro (laughs) before me again. It will not happen. So get that fucking wet dream out of your head. Noah, who is your first sell high candidate on the list for this week? Week four, fantasy football. It's my boy, Adam Thielen from the Minnesota Vikings. And he's a big sell high for me just because I know, I know we drafted him because we thought his floor was so safe, but we just look at what Stefanski's doing in this whole offense. They just don't want to throw no matter what happens. They're going to run the ball. We've seen them in a game against Green Bay when they were losing the entire game. They threw the ball 32 times. That's not a recipe for success. Um, They might be two and one, so maybe that's a lie that it's not a recipe for success. But we've seen them not want to throw the ball, and it's really impacted Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs, but he's not in this video because nobody's buying him. And if you're selling him, you're probably selling him to the waiver wire at this point. So for Adam Thielen, if you look at just his raw numbers and you look at his market share of air yards, sure, it looks great. He's number one in the league, having 46% of his team's air yards, but he's 40th in air yards just because this offense isn't throwing. So sure, he's getting a ton of looks on his own team. But what does that mean when your team's throwing 20, 25 times a game, just running Dalvin Cook until his ACL falls right off his knee? So this <laughs> this isn't going to – I know, it's a little – I'll calm down. Far off our video at ease. I, I'll calm down. But you look <laughs> at this offense as a whole, not only is there like a lack of overall volume, in the red zone as well, they've run the ball 17 times inside the 20-yard line. They've passed only five times in that area of the field. So the touchdowns aren't going to be there for him if they're not – like. Those are those those touchdowns that are a little bit more predictable than like 50-yard touchdowns, obviously. But even those, those deep balls, they're not there because Kirk Cousins is 23rd in deep attempts. So the overall volume isn't there. The volume for chunk yardages um, and those touchdowns that give him that upside aren't there anymore. And they're at a 39% pass rate. So I'm not going to expect this team to flip the script anytime soon just because we've seen them in losing games for continue to run the ball because Dalvin Cook has been phenomenal. And their offensive line has looked very good, much better than last year. Um, so I don't, I don't expect much to change out of there. And the fact that he scored three touchdowns up until this point, like one of them was a rushing touchdown. That's probably never going to happen again in his entire life, even if he's playing flag football. I was like, about to say, yeah, that, that rushing touchdown makes his numbers look good. Like he walked away with a, like a 17 or 18 point fantasy day, um, probably even higher than that. But like this passing situation in Minnesota is fucking brutal. I, be, I mean, it sucks if you draft Stephon Diggs. Luckily – I have zero shares of Diggs in, in redraft leagues. I have some dynasty shares of him, which I'm not really too concerned about because that will play itself out over the long run, hopefully. But, um, but yeah, Diggs is a monster concern. I don't think he's even – I don't even think you put him in your lineup until, like, something really changes, which probably is not going to be the case. But Thielen, I'm on board with the sell high. I mean, we were, we were wondering coming into the year, like, do we see first half Adam Thielen from last year or second half Adam Thielen from last year? And we thought it was going to meet somewhere in the middle. And, you know, he's scored three times in three games. But when you look at the actual numbers, I mean, three targets, eight targets, five targets. The first eight games of last year, he was seeing double-digit targets in every game, and he hasn't seen that yet. Three catches, five catches, three yards. Or three catches, five catches, three catches. And those are his game logs, right? 43 yards, 75 yards, 55 yards. He's, he was routinely getting 100 yards from scrimmage every single game last year. So he's not the Adam Thielen that we want. He's not the Adam Thielen that we're going to get going, you know, later into the season. He's – He's the one here. He's a clear one here, but he's not operating as a fantasy wide receiver one, and that's the problem. So coming off a game 
where he scored two touchdowns. One was on the ground, but some fantasy owners probably aren't going to look that deep into the stats. They're just going to say, okay, Adam Thielen doing his thing, whatever. Um, this is definitely a sell high opportunity for Adam Thielen. Yeah. And you look at his upcoming schedule too. He either faces like a tough defense against the pass or a team that's just terrible. And that's going to be favorable, favorable for them to run like the giants. The Lions are pretty good defense, but like the Redskins, uh, the Seahawks, like, there's a lot of teams that they're just going to run the ball out against. There's only three games that I see on their upcoming schedule where it's like a below par defense and they're going to ha like have to throw. It's against the Chargers, the Chiefs, and Philly in two weeks. Other than that, like I don't see him being much more than like – sure, he'll finish a week maybe as a wide receiver too, but I couldn't trust him as much more than that just because he's seen 16 targets up to this point. If you pace that out, that's just like barely over 80. And the reason why you drafted him in the second or third round is for that safe floor, and we're not getting that out of anybody – in Minnesota other than Delvin Cook at this point. Yeah, and one guy, I mean, I would flip him for, my top buy low candidate of the week, and I highly doubt you're going to be able to make this trade, but maybe. Maybe the Devontae own, uh, Adams owner is sick of, of the performances that he has put up thus far. He's been miserable if you used, you know, your first round pick on the Green Bay wide receiver one out there, if you still want to call him that, considering MBS is legitimately looking like the wide receiver one in Green Bay right now. But I'm, I'm saying hold the horses. Hold on to Devonta if you've held on this long, right? They came into the year with an extremely tough schedule to open up things, right? Right out of the gate, I kind of assumed that he was – I didn't assume he was going to struggle, definitely not to this extent, but it, you couldn't have found a harder schedule for a wide receiver to start out with. 21 targets so far, 15 catches, 198 scoreless yards. That is the crazy thing because last year he had 13 touchdowns, 10 touchdowns the year before, 12 the year before that. He was the odds-on favorite to lead the NFL in touchdowns this year per Vegas at the wide receiver position at least. So he's got his work cut out for him. There are already four guys or three guys with four touchdowns. I, I, I would put the money against Adams winning the uh, scoring title this year. He's on pace for 80 catches right now, over 1,000 receiving yards, which is fine, but it's not going to cut it considering where you drafted him. Like I said, though, they started off Chicago, Minnesota, Denver, right? And Denver's not a great defense right now, but when you have Chris Harris on you, that becomes a very, very tough matchup. So from a passing standpoint, this has been very, very tough. But if you look at the chart on the screen right now, Devonta Adams' schedule for the next six weeks is fantastic, right? They take on Philly Thursday night this week, week, uh, week four, without Ronald Darby. Um, and if you see here, like every team is basically in the top half in terms of fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. They have a couple, a couple tough matchups. They have at Dallas, at um, the Chargers six weeks into the season, or six weeks later from where we are now. And that will obviously get him a matchup with Casey Hayward. He'll probably – face Byron Jones in this week five matchup against um, Dallas. But Byron Jones, I mean, Byron Jones is definitely a very good cornerback. But, like, not everyone that's been good in the NFL is, like, a shutdown cornerback that you can't start your guys against. So I'm pretty sure Devonta Adams is a better wide receiver than Byron Jones is a cover cornerback. He's, like, the 22nd rated cornerback through three games so far um, per PFF in terms of man coverage. So the schedule lightens up a lot, and it's not like Devontae Adams has fallen off as a player. I mean, he's still grading out as a top 10 wide receiver per PFF in terms of just receiving grades. Like, the stats haven't been there, but he's been fine. He's been able to create separation and do things when the ball is thrown his way. Um, he has also seen five of the 14 Aaron Rodgers' deep passes so far this year, which is 36%. I think the bigger problem is just the offense overall, um, the lack of passing touchdowns from Aaron Rodgers through three weeks, right? He's only scored four times through the air which puts him on pace for a little bit over 21 passing touchdowns. He's only attempted three passes inside the 10-yard line so far. None of them have gone to Devonta Adams, which is a concern. But Aaron Rodgers came out after last game. He's like four targets for Devonta is obviously not enough, especially on a day like today where there's a lot of soft coverage and some stuff to be hit outside. We've got to keep finding ways to get him the ball more often. So I think it's absolutely a get-right game right now. If you can grab Devontae Adams before this week four matchup against Philly, where, again, they're going to be without Ronald Darby, their, their top corner. Um, they've allowed 300 passing yards per game over the first three weeks. They've allowed a 100-yard receiver in all three of their games so far. So um, I'm all in on trying to get Devontae right now. You might have to lower expectations just because Matt LaFleur is, is miserable at play calling. They want to go run heavy. Their defense has obviously improved. So they're going to look to run clock and maybe have defenses win the game for them. They're 3-0, and so it's hard to say that, like, you know, they need to change things dramatically on offense, but they, they're definitely leaving a lot of points on the field. And I think Aaron Rodgers is just so good in his own right that he's eventually going to fix that. Yeah, the last time we saw Aaron Rodgers speak out about a player, it was getting Aaron Jones more touches. And we remember last year he was pretty much like an RB1 for like a seven-week stretch before he got hurt. Yeah. Same thing's happening here for Adams. And it's not like Adams isn't getting like a ton of volume. Sure, it's not what we expected of him last year. 
the only volume he's really not getting that we saw last year is red zone usage. And I'd expect that to spike because over the past three years, as you brought up, he's been like one of the better red zone weapons, not only on his team, but in the entire league. So that's not something that over three weeks, you should just expect that like to not look like no longer be a part of his game, if that makes sense. And just touching on that schedule too, I'm pretty sure Darius Slay is banged up. So that game against Detroit may not be as bad as somebody would think. And even Casey Hayward, I'm a Chargers fan. I'll admit it. He gets burned by speed a lot. And I know Devontae Adams doesn't have speed, but their whole secondary, if Derwin James, I don't think he'll be back by then. They can't really stop anybody at this point. And I don't think just one cornerback against Devontae Adams is enough to like stop them. Like, stop yeah. them at this point. Yeah, I think that schedule is, is going to be like the entire difference in whether or not Devontae Adams produces right now. So um, he's Devontae Adams. He is still the same guy that we've seen over the last three years. They just need a little bit more passing volume, which I expect to happen um, sooner rather than later. And Devontae Adams is absolutely a buy low for me right now. Yeah, moving on from a guy we love to a guy that we've caught a lot of heat about. It's our man, 6'4", 295 pounds, Derrick Henry. He will never back. not be in this video. He will never not be in this video. And I'm so fucking – I'm so here for this content. Let's go. I'll admit it that we were wrong about him in the first video, but we weren't really wrong because everything we said still holds true. All he gets is volume, and it's on a bad team. After week one, they looked awesome, right? They played against Cleveland. They turned Baker Mayfield over probably a million times that game. And they were just in so many good scoring opportunities that, you know, he was there on the goal line and he caught that 75-yard touchdown, which... We're I talking about Derrick Henry, by the way. I don't even think we said his name. He, he's, I don't think we need to say his name. I was about to, to say, we're not a, it's, this is actually a channel where we're not allowing him. <laughs> he's the like Voldemort. Voldemort. Yeah. Voldemort <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, like, let's bring up his touchdowns, right? You said it like a million uh-huh. times that... All his touchdowns were the results of penalties in the end zone. So I took your big facts and or I took your big thoughts and I made them into big facts. And I looked up the play by play. Every single touchdown he has scored, I'll put it on the screen and I outlined it just so you guys, if you guys are Derrick Henry fans and you're all like going haywire, you can actually read it this time. Every single touchdown has come off of either like a neutral zone infraction that put them inside the five, a penalty in the end zone, a uh, uh, defensive holding or pass interference that put them on the one that's happened each of the past two weeks. And he scored because of that. This isn't an offense that's going to be moving the ball down the field as like much or very much uh, throughout the rest of the season. We've seen them be, I think, 23rd in red zone. It's trips. only a matter of time before Ryan Tannehill takes over at quarterback. Mar- Mariota is just like a broken shell of what he was as, as a college quarterback. He's going to be off the field. I don't know if that actually might be a positive to be honest, but like, yeah, everything you said. I was so pumped up when you fucking tweeted out the pictures of all of his, his touchdowns besides the screen pass, of course, that he had. But we've seen since then, like, he just keeps dropping balls that are thrown. He's dropped two balls over the past two weeks. Like, that's not a part of his game that you can rely on. And if you take yeah. out that 75-yard pass, he's averaging just over four yards per touch, which is extremely inefficient. I know oh, it's not good to, like – also outpacing him in, in uh, routes run, 49 to 35. So it's like, you know, outside of a couple big plays, I know that he's been there and he's produced for you up to three weeks. But everything tells you, like, the predictive things that you're looking at, that he's going to slow down. And he's just, like, there's going to be a couple game scripts where he, where uh, like, Jacksonville the other night, where he doesn't get that one-yard touchdown. And then you're looking at, like, multiple games of five or six points because he can't get it done through the air. I mean, obviously, at this point, um, you could probably sell him very high just on how he's producing. But, like, I don't know. I, I – I can't get on board with someone that we have no idea on a weekly basis, you know, what we don't even, that's the bad part. Like we don't even know what the Titans are. So we can't even get a good feel for like when they're going to have good game scripts. Yeah. We thought their defense was elite after they like made Baker Mayfield look like a college freshman, but we yeah. saw last week. Yeah, Gardner Browns Min- are like fucking anti elite. So it's like anyone who plays the Browns, their defense looks phenomenal. Yeah. And Brown's offensive line was decimated that game. But like you look at this past week, Gardner Minshew tore him up. And if that's going to be the case where, like, throw-in quarterbacks just go in there and destroy their defense, there's not going to be many game scripts for Derrick Henry to produce. And we saw it came at the very end of the game. I think it was, like, the third quarter when he scored that touchdown. And I tweeted out, it's like, oh, he gets bailed out again because they called yeah. a pass interference in the end zone. Like, that's what you have to have out of Derrick Henry to get a good game. And if you don't get that, you're getting, like, 22 rushes for 87 yards and no catches. Is that, like, really what you want? You could flip him for a guy who's getting passing down work a guy who's getting goal line work, like maybe not Chris Carson at this point because there's like a little skepticism about him in Seattle, but I wouldn't, I don't know. I wouldn't hate moving him for Carson at this point. No, I, I would. Um, it, it's close just given the fumbles and we don't know what's going to happen when Rashad Penny comes back. But I mean, like, yeah, you look at the game script against, you know, they have the Falcons next week. They're on the road. So anytime it's on the road, it's going to be a tougher team, a tougher matchup for 
the offense. And the Falcons are notorious for letting up receptions to running backs, which is not where Derrick Henry is going to um, succeed. Then they play the Bills the week after that, which are very tough defense, obviously. Um, then they play at Denver, right? They're in, um, they're at, at the Broncos. So that's another, you know, they haven't been able to get pressure on the quarterback, of course, but still playing in Mile High City on the road against the Denver team that should be, you know, on paper, a much better defense. Hopefully yeah. they get it three weeks down the road. It's just like, it's not a lot of good game scripts coming for Derrick Henry. And I, I feel like we're going to see the fall off sooner rather than later. So I would, um, I would probably try, I'm not going to say I cut bait with, cut bait for him for like pennies on the dollar. Definitely not just because how much he's produced, but he's a guy that if you could sell him based on the production that he's put up, I don't think that production is going to be something that we should expect moving forward. Same thing with Denver Broncos running back, Philip Lindsay coming off an absolute monster game. I would sell the shit out of him right now. We know he's a talented player and he's going to have some good games, obviously just based on, on that talent alone. But he had this big game against green Bay this week. 21 for 81, which is only 3.9 yards per carry, but he got in the end zone twice, caught four passes for 49 yards. Um, however, you know, Green Bay is obviously a much improved defense. Their run defense is, is their weak point. That's easily the worst part of their defense. Uh, me and Joe Holka talked about on the DFS pod last week. Um, this was a matchup to attack for the Denver Broncos running backs. I don't like how they're using Lindsey. They're using him as like the thumper, the inside the, inside the tackle like guy who gets 18 carries, but most of them are just like right behind the center and the guards. I'm like, Lindsay Johnson carries. Yeah, exactly. That's what we call him here. The David Johnson carries. And that's not good for a guy who's 185 pounds. He's averaging 3.6 yards per carry on the season compared to 4.8 yards per carry for Royce Freeman. The problem with Lindsay though, is you drafted him to be the RB one and, and you drafted him because his talent is so high, but they're in an exact 50, 50 time split right now. So the way I look at it is it's time to get out of that situation altogether if you could sell him, and now is the time to do it, right? Lindsey's seen 114 snaps to Royce Freeman's 109 on the year. Lindsey has ran 55 routes compared to 56 for Royce Freeman, and Royce Freeman actually got banged up a little bit in this one, left the game, so that's even more snaps on the field for Lindsey here. So it actually could be more in favor of Freeman. Um, the big difference, of course, is the goal line role, actually. Lindsey's coming away with these touchdowns. He's gotten all five carries inside the five-yard line, while Freeman has actually gotten zero which is kind of ironic given like the stature that the two guys have, but they like Lindsay. They think he's a good vision back on the goal line. Can't fault him if he's going to be the one getting into the end zone. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm telling you to sell Lindsay right now because this is just a horrible situation for running backs, like 50, 50 time split in an offense that's averaging 15.3 points per game, 30th in the NFL. They are not running like their, their pace is not good. They're 26th in pace per football outsiders. And when they're in neutral game scripts um, and, Surprisingly, Lindsay's actually been involved in the passing game, which is good to see. So he's got a little bit more value in PPR. He's seen five plus targets in all three games. He's also caught at least four passes in all three games. But like those games that we saw on Sunday where he's actually, you know, the Philip Lindsay that we want him to be are going to be so few and far between. So at this point, like what I would really do is I would try to flip Lindsay for like a legit wide receiver too. Maybe see if you can grab Calvin Ridley straight up off his down week this week, or even like something like flip Lindsay for Chris Thompson plus like a low-end wide receiver two or something like that. Because Chris Thompson has a phenomenal floor. His, his floor is almost the same as Philip Lindsay's at this point because he's seeing six to seven catches a game, which is kind of ridiculous. And, you know, at the end of the game when it's garbage time, it's all Chris Thompson. So Chris Thompson and maybe like a John Brown or something like that who's the number one target in Buffalo, I wouldn't be opposed to a, a flip like that, even though, you know, just based on name, you might disagree with it. Yeah, I agree with that trade. We saw on Monday night just how much run Chris Thompson got, and I know they were behind a lot in that game, but what do you expect out of Washington? That's going to be their game script a lot of the time. He's getting a lot of carries too, so I, I agree with you. I don't think there's much of a disparity between he and Philip Lindsay the rest of the season. And also, is Theo Riddick still on this team? Because if he is and he comes back from that shoulder injury, like how are the touches going to be divvied up? He's always that guy that just takes like, you know, three to five touches no, a game. Like, I don't think they cut Devontae Booker. So we're seeing Devontae Booker being, like, not fucking involved whatsoever. So it, 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 there's a, definitely a chance that Theo Riddick comes back. They – I don't know what they do with Devontae Booker. Maybe put him on the fucking practice squad or whatever. Um, but the fact that he's not getting any work tells me that Theo Riddick might not get any work either. I, it's just like they're using Freeman and Lindsay in a complete 50-50 time split, which is the concern here because – a guy that's, you know, in, in a shitty offense is averaging 15 points per game. You know, you need, like, giant game. Like, he shouldn't even have the fucking last touchdown that he had against Green Bay. He was stopped on, like, the three-yard line. Green Bay, like, gave up, and then he got in. And me and Snacks and Adam were going fucking nuts, I remember, because um, I had Dalton, Green Bay. Was that? Like Dalton Risner, like, suplexed him into the end zone from, like, the three. He just, like, threw him over ball. his shoulder. It was a pretty baller play. I felt, I, I, I felt pretty good for Philip Lindsay, I'm not going to lie. 
but yeah, like a common a commonality between all these running backs that we're going to talk about as sell highs except for the next one is like they're in bad offenses and they're not dominating snaps and like Philton's is the only one getting passing down work but so is Royce Freeman out of that backfield so like if the volume isn't there and you're not in a good offense you have to sell high if the opportunity arises, which it has so far for the uh, for Philip Lindsay. Yeah, I mean that's basically what we preached all off season too. It's like these mid round guys who are you know supposedly the RB ones, but are going to be in a timeshare no matter which way you look at it. Plus offenses that we don't think are going to be that high powered. Like those are just set up to have shitty game scripts for at least like half of their games, and then who knows if they're going to be involved in the passing game. So it's not like these guys are new to us, you know, disliking. We're just preaching that when they have good games because everyone's going to have one or two games when you look back at the season um that's when you sell high yeah and a guy that has had perfect game scripts and hasn't produced but has scored touchdowns which opens up a window for you to sell him is sony michelle of the new england patriots and i'm like extremely concerned about him i i'll admit it i was wrong i do you know what do you know what the definition of sell high is i mean he scored a touchdown last week oh no how did he get in here why did you send him the fucking... I didn't send him anything. Oh, he's gone. How the fuck did he even get that link? I don't know. He's like Boo Radley. He just hopped in here. Got that was ridiculous. I kind of wish he just popped in here, to be honest. I got spooked. He must have thought we were talking about, like, Saquon Barkley or something. Maybe Daniel Jones, but... All right. Uh, it's Sony Michelle of the New England Patriots. And the only reason I'm selling high is because he scored a touchdown last week. And I'm not sure that there are, like, any buyers for him at this point. But you look at what happened last week and even the first three weeks as a whole... They've had perfect game scripts for him to just run the ball 20, 25 times, and it's not happening. Like last week, they were killing the, uh, the Jets. He played 22% of the snap. I think he had like nine carries for 11 yards and a touchdown. Like he's, he's on a good offense, sure, but Rex Burkhead is not only outplaying him, he's out snapping him. He's getting more yards on the ground and through the air than him. Uh, this offensive line hasn't looked good. And now with James Devlin gone, like, how many opportunities are there going to be for Sonny Michelle to be out in the field? I looked through, like, his touchdowns through his entire career. He scored 14 of them. Ten of them came while James Devlin was the lead blocker for him. So, and that could have been a sign last week as the limited volume because if James Devlin was not there, which he wasn't in week two or week three, maybe they don't feel, like, comfortable with Sonny Michelle in those formations when he's the lone back. And maybe that's where Rex Burkhead's going to get more snaps. Uh, James White is coming back, which just further limits him. It's a touch squeeze there. And just overall, like, He's been a bad running back this year. His longest run on the season is 12 yards, and he's forced one missed tackle on 46 on 45 touches, which is it's awful. He oh, he had, he did force a missed tackle. I, yeah, I think I, last week. I, yeah, out, I remember last week, like the missed tackles forced per attempt or whatever, and like bottom five was like Sony Michelle, Jamal Williams, David Johnson, and like two other shitty backs that can't make anybody fucking miss. Sony Michelle, very concerning right now. Like. Yeah. Bro, I feel like Rex Burkhead is po- probably the back to – I mean, James White there, but Rex Burkhead might be the back to own there right now. Yeah, he, he got the goal line carry last week, and he took it in for a touchdown right away. And that's, you know, without James Devlin, maybe they just have, like, a 50-50 split on the goal line. Is that really what you want out of a guy like Sony Michel? You and, needed him to score – you needed him to be someone getting 20 carries a game plus, you know, 10 to 12 rushing touchdowns by the, by the end of the year. Because I don't think – I mean, we – we were hopeful that he was going to get more passing work, but if you, you, there's no way you drafted him because you thought he was going to get, you know, 50, 60 targets this year. It was just the fact that he was going to be in this Patriots offense, but their run blocking line has looked horrible, right? And, like, if he's not getting the work on the goal line exclusively to himself, it's, it's, a, it's an issue. And he's not even getting overall volume anymore. So, like, he is – like I said, I don't, I don't – I'd be hard-pressed to find someone that, like, wants to buy him right now. Um, but, you know, based on the touchdowns, I guess you might be able to pull something off. Yeah, and you look at the teams they've played thus far. What was it? Miami, New York, and another team that they won by like 40 against. Like yeah. the Patriots are so hard to figure out because you expect them to like run the ball because they have these leads. Tom Brady doesn't care. He's just going to throw like 100 touchdowns. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, like the game script argument doesn't work for one team, and it's the it'll maybe two, the Vikings, and also the Patriots. So I don't see like many opportunities for him to be like relied on as much more than an RB2 from here on out unless you're like in a pure standard league with. If you do, you're probably not watching this channel. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think in shallower leagues where it's like two running backs and a flex, I don't even think you could really start him. I mean, you're going to be debating between Sonia Michelle and, and guys like John Brown on a weekly basis, and I'll probably take guys like John Brown. Um, I mean, they do have a great schedule, obviously, in which they're going to be favored in plenty of the games. But we've seen so far that that's not like the formula for Sonia Michelle. So it seems like there is no formula for Sonia Michelle right now. 
Um, he's someone that you probably need to get off your team sooner rather than later because he's had the perfect setup in order to get it done these first three weeks and just, just didn't do it. He just didn't do it. Those are our five trade targets. What else we got? I think that's about it. All right. That's all we got for y'all today. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. You can hit us on Patreon.com, which is where all of our uh, in-season exclusive content is. You can get weekly rankings. You can get access to a private live stream on Saturdays. You can get access to a forum in which myself, FB God, Animal, and Snacks answer your questions to the best of our ability, which is not really that good, but we try our best, I promise. And our waiver wire exclusive article each week, patreon.com slash bdge. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll see y'all on tomorrow's video. players and if I already have injuries I'm probably not going to try to find other injuries I have to deal with yeah we ain't going to do that what's what up people this? why are people like coming in now who is this I don't know how twitch works do they get a notification you think dude somebody's in our fucking video <laughs> it's fake Nikki snacks <laughs> what up boy <laughs> what up <laughs> I love how, this. how did you get in here the meeting <laughs> I saw your I saw your meeting ID and I was like I wonder if I can just hop in on him and I tested it and it worked but yeah I was like I You're thought high. it was really it's snacks. up top <laughs> yeah yeah i see that now because i you know i have zoom set up and then it's going through obs to stream to twitch but we normally just record zoom uh for youtube so it doesn't have the meeting id on top i thought it was snacks and i thought no it was fucking setting me up i was like there's no way <laughs> max is not technologically fucking advanced enough to figure out how to get into a meeting but yeah this is uh this is Stuart spawn from your patreon what up boy what's, oh, up? Okay. what's up do you have any live questions that we can answer uh yeah, actually, should I be should I be trying to trade away Devonta Adams? Should I be worried? No, no. You you, <laughs> you must have just joined the the Twitch stream, huh? Yeah. Okay, I I had listed Devonta Adams as a buy low guy like ten minutes ago. Oh yeah, because I just got in here. I was making that making that a uh, fake account. I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> time well spent. Time well spent. Um. Yeah. No. So I'm I'm gonna hold on to Devonta. I just think. I mean, you weathered the storm. You got you got past the, the worst three weeks. So I mean, if you can if you can flip him for something like outrageous, maybe go do it. But I think the worst the worst days are behind him. I think he's fine to go. The schedule of the next six weeks looks pretty good. All right, I'm, I'm gonna hop out. Let y'all take back over. I don't want to be interrupting. All right, nice to meet All you, right. man. Thanks. Later, Thanks. boys. Later, finesse be God. Nice, <laughs> love that. <laughs> finesse be God. Is that what he called you? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> You're funny. Uh, oh wait. Hold